So here we go. So I'm logged into command here, agent.kw.com. And the first place that I want to start is going to be to make sure that I have DocuSign connected to my command. So what I'm going to do is come up to the top right hand corner, click on my name and then go into settings. This is going to bring me to the applets that are, are apps that are connected to my command. And so you're going to see DocuSign here in mind that already it has been connected and we're good to go. You may see a couple different statuses in here that maybe it needs to be uh, verified or authorized. Uh, it could be that you haven't done this at all yet. So go ahead and click on and start entering in that information. Um, I can't do it right here because I already have mine connected, but uh, I'm sure Chris could definitely help you with getting the accounts actually set up uh, if that's something you have yet to do or having troubles with. Um, but my advice is not to go to DocuSign, create an account, and then try to connect it here. Create it here through, by following the steps that, that pop up for you. So once we have it connected and we want to start a transaction, let's say, the very first thing that we have to do is make sure we have a contact. We have a contact in place in order for us to create an opportunity in order to create the room. So I'm going to head into my contacts applet first here, come up to the top right hand corner and hit add contact. And now I'm going to give you my information. If you guys ever have questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Fred Moore, Fred Moore kw.com and my cell phone number. And for today's purposes, the only thing that I'm going to do is have a name and email address in for the contact, right? Obviously when you're working with somebody, you want to make sure you add in more information to get to that hundred percent health score. But because we're just using this as what I'm going to call a dummy account, um, the basics are, are all that you really need. So name, email address are the two important pieces when we move forward. So go ahead and hit that create button, add the contact, or we can go ahead and jump into another contact here. Open up the contact card. And now there's gonna be a couple different ways for you to create the opportunity. I personally like doing it from the contact card itself because when I come to opportunities here and I click on create opportunity, what it's going to do for me is give me my client's name already filled out for me. So I have Christine here, names filled in, and I can put in um, the co-seller. And they'll be in there, but at the top we'll have our market center. If you're part of multiple market centers, you can choose which one. If you're part of a team, That'll also show up here for you, whether you're gonna create a team opportunity or individual, depending on how the team is set up. Then we're gonna have opportunity type. So we have listing, buyer, landlord, and tenant. When we create these, it's going to take the client's name and default to the name dash opportunity type. So what I like getting in the habit of doing is naming the opportunity name itself the address, right? I'm working on a listing. So I'm going to come and name this the actual address. Don't forget that unit number. <laughs> unit number. Yep. So in here, it's just for me to reference back to if I'm working with a buyer, uh, I obviously don't know the address. So I would leave it in their name dash buyer. So that's just the habit that I get into, uh, especially for compliance reasons too. They're gonna come back and sometimes it's easier for them to search by the address versus the client's name because they don't know the client. Um, so just the habit that I got into. Also for reasons when we get into DocuSign, the opportunity name becomes the room name. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more. I'm not gonna go into more of the details here. Uh, it is gonna require you to put in the commission that you get on your side, and then you can put it in your phase and stage, assign it to the people that it needs to be assigned to, and then hit create. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the opportunity creation itself or inside opportunities because we wanna learn about DocuSign. Let's go ahead and hit create. Great. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on the opportunity itself here to open it up. 
So now I'm inside my opportunity and I'm gonna to come to my documents tab here in the middle of the screen. And this is where we're going to be doing our compliance. So we'll circle back to the compliance piece of it after we get all of the documents together. What we wanna start here though is to create the room itself. So now don't go to DocuSign and create the room when you're doing this. Always start with the opportunity and hit start a transaction here so that they are connected. So we have uh, a different, uh, two separate programs, right? So when we talk about command, yeah. opportunities, and then compliance, and then we have separate from that is DocuSign rooms in envelopes. So when we hit start a transaction, it's going to create that new room for us and be synced with our opportunity. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what it's gonna, what's gonna happen is one of two things for you, depending on your browser. You're either gonna get a new tab here where you can sign in, otherwise it'll remain here. And at the top, you may see a little icon that says the pop-up blocker is on. So go ahead and click on that and it allow you to then come to the screen. So now that we have our DocuSign, go ahead and enter in your logins and sign in. And the first thing it's going to bring us to is the documents tab, right? It's empty, we haven't put any documents in here yet. But again, we'll come back, we'll see that the name of the room matches the opportunity name. We'll see that Christine and Peter are the sellers that we selected. So when we come to our details tab, this is the first thing that I like to do is come to my details and verify that my sellers are actually in here. So we'll see seller one, Christine, and seller two, Peter Parker. Now, if they're not in there, that's totally okay. It takes you a minute here. We'll hit on the edit button in the top right-hand corner. And now we can edit this screen. So you can add in their names and email addresses. You can start adding in addresses for the property, you can start adding in the client's address as well. At the bare minimum, for this to work very smoothly for you, you're gonna want their name and email address. Name and email, very important. Outside of that, the rest of the stuff, I sometimes fill out, I sometimes don't, just depends on uh, the day really, because it doesn't really matter too much for me whether I fill it out here or in the form because it fills one way or the other. So if I fill this out, I open the form, it fills the form. I have a I question. Little... Bruce. What's that? I have a question. Sure. <laughs> it looks like at the top of your screen where it says room information, because you originated this document through um, uh, command that it would auto populate like docus that like dot loop used to do where it has the at the top here under room information it has the property address for sale and then but i don't see it under the location because this is just the name of the room this is not there's no address associated with this right now with a property right there's no property associated with with this docusign room so it doesn't auto populate. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. So we hit edit and we come in and we can change that information. So it, it's not designed to auto populate and include the address here. The only yeah. thing that it's going to bring over is the, the, con, the contacts at okay. this point. Thank you. Yep. So if I add it here, it will go into the form. And we're going to talk, we'll see the forms here in a second. Or if I add it to the form and I save it, it'll backfill here to update other forms. So that's why I pick in whether or not I add it in here. Um, but for now, we will add it in. You don't, again, you don't have to. So 123 Main Street. So I'll have my address in here. And this will populate into the listing agreement into the purchase agreements. And then uh, sellers have an address uh, field as well. 
So this is based on the property. Not always is the property that we're buying or selling the same address as the client. So we can come in and also do the same thing. So now I have the client's information. Again, the bare minimum we want, name and email. And then we have the address and their address. So once we have information in that we want to put in, we'll go ahead and hit save. Susan, what do you mean by initial steps? Susan, are you, are you there? You want to come off mute? Hi, I'm finding it. Yeah. the initial steps were a little confusing till you got into this room because uh, it just seemed more complicated than, than I understood, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> sure. Are you talking about creating the opportunity itself? Yeah, I got, the, I got that you have to create an opportunity and then that you have to try to get into a room. Yep. Um, there was a button that says start transaction and then we came here. And there, I haven't done too much else than that. Okay, I just have to go over that. Yeah. So Thank I'll you. go back to command here. So now inside of my opportunity, it says go to transaction, but the initial step says start a transaction. Okay. Once you click on that, it brings you to this screen. Does that help? And then, and then? And then I went to the details tab and we were talking about filling in the details. Ah. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. So once we have our details in, whatever we want to choose to put in here, we'll head back into our documents tab where we're gonna add our either flat PDFs, we can add our forms, zip forms, whatever it is that you wanna interact with here. But for today's class, we're gonna focus on the DocuSign forms themselves. So I'm gonna click add at the top right hand corner and then you'll see I can have computer, DocuSign forms, zip forms, or one of my three cloud services, but I'm gonna select DocuSign forms. And if this is the very first time you, you do this, it's gonna ask for you uh, to validate your NRDS number. Now, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, the documents are hidden behind your NERDS ID currently, correct? Correct, yeah, so you must enter the, your NAR uh, ID number for GBAR and MAR forms to appear. Okay, so it'll, you'll have an icon here, a big R for Realtor. Uh, click on that. It'll ask you for your NRDS number, and then you'll have a drop down and you'll select your board. So you go ahead and select the one that you're associated with, and you'll only have to do it once, and then you'll see this screen. So I've, only, I've already done that, which is why you're not seeing it on my screen. So every other time that you come in and you want to add a DocuSign form, you'll see this here. So now the first drop down gives us library and group. I'm going to leave it on library and come to select library. And you're going to see now the folders of, of uh, files or forms that you can use depending on the associations that you are a part of. Now for me being in <coughs> Connecticut, I have my Connecticut association, the board that I'm part of, the 815 here, the documents that I have inside of my market center, and then Smart MLS. Now it shows 730 here because I was at one point part of Chestnut Hill, uh, and they somehow keep, keep me in there. They just like me that much, I guess. We don't um, want to let you go. <laughs> right? So you'll see some of your uh, documents in here that they've created for you that aren't necessarily a board form. Fred, can I just interrupt real quickly and just a quick asterisk to that? Um, we are aware that there, there seems to be an issue with those of you out of the um, uh, Boston Metro West market. So um, those office forms have disappeared temporarily and we're hoping to get those back. So just know that they're coming back and they'll be there. Awesome. Um, so the, I'm going to jump into my car documents here just because I'm familiar with these. And I can come through and select the documents that I need for this listing. Um, so in Connecticut, you know, uh, foundation concrete or 
uh, property condition forms. If I wanted to search for my lead disclosure, um, I would have the listing agreements and I can go in and search for them here and manually enter them. What I've gone ahead and done for my market center though, is I've set up folders. So if I come to the top here and I select forms group and I have my drop downs here, I can select one of these folders. So it's the listing documents and it gives me the forms that I'm going to need the basic forms of what I'm going to need in order to do a transaction in this case, a listing. So instead of searching for it in my car and then go to my greater new Haven and then go to my KW815, I put them all in a folder for us. So that way I have my documents in one location. Now this is something that your uh, leadership team can do for you, but keep in mind the only documents you're going to see are the ones that your NRDS number allow you to see. And I have a question, Chris, do you know if we're already set up for that? Uh, yes. Um, uh, well, Chestnut, Chestnut Hills is up and running. For some reason, uh, the Boston Metro West office is not. So we'll have to double back and get those reloaded for you. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select a few documents here that I'm going to need for, for this and hit add. So once I hit add, we're going to see three files pop up here inside of my room. And the one thing I want to highlight is it says form. It is blue and it says form here. Now there's going to be three total different uh, icons that we're going to see. You'll see form. You'll see a green one that says signed and a red one that says PDF. Now, when you see form, you're going to know that this one will always be editable. It will never have a signature and will never be flat. And what do I mean by flat is <clears throat> when I open this up, I'm going to see a whole bunch of boxes for me to fill out. A flat document wouldn't have these. So when you upload a, a PDF, which is flat, it doesn't have these boxes for you to fill in. And so now what we're also seeing is, right, the names of the sellers came in along with the address because I put it in the details tab. Now, if I didn't put it there, but again, I typed it in here manually, hit save and close, it would then fill the details tab and then populate in the next document for me. So as I scroll down, I can fill in all of these boxes here as needed, which I'm not necessarily going to do right now. But when I come to the bottom, again, I just wanna point out there are no signature boxes here. There's nothing for me to sign. So again, this is a form that's always editable. So an example would be uh, in Connecticut, we have, we write our own purchase and sale agreements. So when I'm writing an offer for my buyer and we put an offer on one, two, three main street and either we negotiate or it doesn't get accepted and we write another contract, I'm going to come back to the same exact form and just make my edits, send it to my envelope, get it signed and send it off. So I'm going to hit right, save. May I ask a question? Sure. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. So um, by editable, is there any way that you have the ability to actually cross out already pre-printed and add your own? For example, in offers, frequently I will put in mutually agreeable. Yep, we will get there uh, in, the, the, in the envelope. In the envelope. Yep. So when it comes to the, the forms in the room, the only thing that's editable is the text for those boxes. If you upload a flat PDF and you want to put text boxes over it and do some cross outs, we would do that in the envelope. And so once we finish filling these out, we'll move to the envelope and we'll show you how to do that. Great. Thank you so much. Yep. Hi, so, Fred. Yes. Hi, I'm sorry. Um, when I, I'm, I opened up my bio agreement, bio representation agreement, and I see boxes are covered the text. Can I change the size of the box? I cannot do it. You cannot. So uh, anything like that that's that sh uh, maybe hiding other text, um, I'll point show you something an example here. When I open up my exclusive right to sell, it looks like my text box for my commission overlaps some of my text here 
But when I put in a number, only the number appears, not the box itself. So when I go to my flat, the where it's flat, this percentage symbol will actually show even though it's hidden behind that box. There are some cases where there is some overlap and if that is the case, um, and it shouldn't be that way, and like, as in like the, the address here isn't 150 characters long and, and right, it shouldn't overlap, um, then connect with Chris or your MCA and they'll be able to connect with DocuSign to make adjustments on these forms. Thank you. All right, so save and close this. What I do want to do is also open up my property condition form here. So now this is a document in Connecticut that we as the agents do not fill out. I'm going to send this to the seller to fill out. So when I look here, I have no problem filling in the name and address, but I have no boxes here for me to fill out or sign in the rest of the document. There's a few pages here, lots of boxes and fields that need to be filled out. Now, the reason for this is because when we go to the envelope, we're going to add those for the sellers to fill out. So I'm going to close this out. And now I'm going to cover over this document and we're going to see the circle here. Go ahead and select that circle. And we're going to see a bunch of icons pop up here in the middle of the screen. So I can copy, move, email, create this envelope, archive, an archive and then there's a trash can, but forget it's there. The trash can does not exist. You should be having all of your documents in here for five, seven years. I forget what the compliance is there. Uh, so forget that, that delete button is there. If you're gonna not wanna see something, just go ahead and archive it. So that way you always have a record. Now, if I go ahead and select the second one, I'm also gonna have a combined button here. So if I had a bunch of documents I wanted to put into one, I can go ahead and hit combine and name it and save it as one document. But in this case, we open them up, we filled them out, they're ready to go and they need signatures. So I have them selected. I'm gonna click on this pen icon and I'm gonna move from now my room into an envelope. So now I'm inside of my envelope details page here. The envelope name, I typically default to, in this case, the uh, the street name or the last name of the client and then what it is that I'm doing. So I'm doing the listing documents. I can go ahead and name it that way. So this here is for me to reference when I'm in my envelopes tab. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean that the client's going to see it. Then we have our documents here and we'll see that we, we added in the uh, property condition and my exclusive right to sell. What I forgot to add in though was my lead form. So, uh, or the personal property. So if I come here and click on room documents, I can now add in any of the other ones that are in my room back into this envelope. I can also use templates, which is a different conversation, or I can add or upload documents from cloud or from my computer here. I'm also slightly OCD. And I like to make sure that my documents are in the right order when I send them out to my clients. So I'm gonna click drag and drop this to the side so that my exclusive right is first, then my property condition, then the seller personal property. So feel free to move those around so they're ordered the way that you want them to be. Hi, this is Kimberly. Hey Kim. Yeah, hey Kimberly, I'm glad you're here for that. Oh. <laughs> All right, All right, so now we're gonna have uh, recipients here. Now, if you don't listen to anything else I say in this call today, this is the one thing that you need to remember. In the first piece that we did, we added the client's name and email address. When we add the recipients, we have three options. We can either add an email address, which is we manually add their name, email, and then all of the boxes in the next screen. Room participants, it takes their name and email address and brings it here for us, but then we manually add all of the boxes in the next screen or you can use pre-tagged roles. Pre-tagged roles does all of the above. It brings their name, their email in, and then assigns and puts all of the boxes in to the next screen that they need to fill out and sign. It will save you a ton of time. So when all else fails, pre-tagged roles is your go-to. So when you do that, it brings up this screen to add our pre-tagged roles. 
And in this case, we're working with seller. So I'll select my seller and seller two. And then listing agent here. Uh, what I've noticed is it brings myself in twice, right? I have Fred Moore here and here. What I'm going to want to do is pick the first one. So now I have the three people that need to fill out and or sign this do these documents and I'll go ahead and hit add selected. Hi Fred. So uh, if I'm a buyer's agent, uh, it should say broker. Uh, how how they're named is however uh, your team has de designated those names to be. I'm a buyer uh, agent, and it doesn't have buyer agent when I um, selected the pre tag tools. Sure. Again, I, I don't know what document you're in, what role you should be in there, uh, or, or the name, so I, I can't necessarily comment on that. Um, anything that may be missing, again, I would connect with your leadership team just to make sure that those fields are assigned appropriately. Yeah, give me a shout um, after the class and we can connect. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I would like to connect to that too, please. <laughs> For buyers, agents. All right, so now we have our three recipients here that we've added. Uh, you'll notice that there's a number to the left here. They all say one. And what that means is, is when I hit send, all three people get this document to sign at the same exact time. It also means that Christine's not going to see Peter's or my signatures. And what happens is eventually they'll all merge into one once it's completed and they'll all overlap accordingly. Now what I could do is change these numbers to be in order of receiving it. Right, so if I need to send something to Christine and she's got to fill it out, but I also want Peter to see what she filled out and then signed it, I can change this from one to two. And then let's say I wanted to review everything at the end, I'm gonna say three. So Christine fills it out and signs, then Peter and then myself. So depending on how you wanna handle that, uh, you can change the order. Now that's nice sometimes to have the orders because we also have to the right here, an option for need to sign, to view it, or to receive a copy. So now if I want to view it, I want to view it after they filled it out and after they've signed it. An example could be, uh, I've only done this a couple times just because I've known the code broke, but what I would do is have the buyers be uh, number one, me be number two, and then the code broke be number three. So they fill it out and sign it. I review it once I hit okay, it automatically goes to the code broke for them to receive a copy. So there's no need for me to come back into DocuSign, find those documents, attach it to an email, and send it out to them. It all happens right here in this one envelope. Now to the right of this, I'm gonna go ahead and also see uh, that I can add private messages here. So we're like dot loop, we had one particular message. So down here at the bottom, it says email message. This would go to everyone. And the private message would show in addition to, but in this case, just to Christine. So I'm gonna discard that. Then I have my email subject down at the bottom here, which is uh, default to please DocuSign. Uh, what I typically do is just leave that and just put please DocuSign listing agreement or whatever it is that I'm working with. You can change that to whatever you feel comfortable with as well as the email message. Now, does anyone have any questions about how to add a document to this envelope from your room or add a participant? Yes, can I? I don't know if I'm on though. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I have a couple questions regarding this. Number one, uh, is there a way to create a PDF when you're sending both the document? And is it also possible to send a, a PDF because some people cannot use DocuSign? In which sense? Are you, so th what we're doing right now is sending it out for signatures. Right, uh, I, okay, so. I, Are you so, trying to send a flat document to someone to print and do it themselves? Yes. That would be in the email function in the last screen. So in the envelope, we're sending to them to do a digital signature. 
if you just want to send them a PDF, my, the easiest way for you to, to do that is download that to a computer and attach it to an email. Okay. And the other question related to this is frequently an agent will send it back not having gotten their signatures from DocuSign, so they send it back as a PDF. Can we upload and then make that document take over the previous document to keep it in storage properly? Uh, you wouldn't replace it. It would just be an additional copy and you could archive the old one. And you can archive because in, in, in the other one, dot loop, you cannot archive an original important document. Yes, you can archive the documents. Great, thank you. Yep. All right. You perfect. please go over the hello. Yeah. Excuse me. Could you go please ahead, go over the definition of room and envelope? Sure. A room is where think of it as your virtual filing cabinet. That's where all of your documents are going to go, all of your forms, everything that's been signed, the documents you're going to need to house or save for uh, that tr particular transaction. An envelope is just what you're going to use to send out for signatures. So think of it as you're writing a letter to me and you want to mail me a document. You're going to put that document into an envelope, put a stamp on it and put it in the mail. Same thing as this, we're putting these documents into the envelope and then we're going to mail it off and then they're going to get to be able to sign it. Thank you. One follow on question. If I'm the listing agent, and then I have an envelope for my listing agreements, then I'm fielding an offer. Does that go in the same envelope or is it a second envelope? If you sent me an envelope, right, that letter that you mailed to me in, in the mail, would you use the same envelope you mailed to me or would you use a different one? I would use a different one. Yeah, so same, just the same concept, right? The envelopes are a one-off use and every time that we want to do new signatures, we would have a new envelope. Okay, but I, thank you. But the, the thrust of my uh, question is, where will the offer documents appear in, in contrast to the listing documents? In the room. In documents. Yeah, so what, let's get, th we're gonna get through the envelope first and I'll show you where the documents end up and then we'll, we'll review that. Before we, before we go to the, uh, back to the envelopes, can I ask uh, another question? Sure. <clears throat> when we're in the, in the rooms, um, and let's say I'm adding a transaction, um, and you are, uh, my seller, uh, in docu, in dot loop, we used to have it set up so that, um, uh, if it was a, a sales transaction, uh, a listing transaction, all of the forms for the, you know, for the seller to sign are there versus a buyer, do we have to attach all of the forms individually in each transaction at the beginning of each transaction? So if you are a seller of mine, I have to install all of the listing documents. And if David Dowd is a buyer client of mine on a separate transaction, I'd have to upload all of the buyer documents for him to sign at that time. Yep, so that's what we did at the very beginning when we hit add forms. And I showed you that there was an, uh, a folder that had all of those in there. So it's the same thing. Instead of it uh, at, in the one screen in dot loop where you would select listing and it would bring listing docs in, now it's a room is a room, whether it's a listing or a buyer. And you would go to that folder that the market center has created for you, select all and add. And just, just to add to that, just a reminder that if you're lucky enough or skilled enough to be handling both sides of that deal, remember you're not necessarily doing that in the same place. The buyer contact should have its own buyer opportunity, you know, with its own room connected. So, so if you're handling both sides of a deal, if that's kind of where your head was, um, th they should be totally separate. You're not combining them into one deal. Now, when you're uh, without doing dual representation, you know, if you're if you're representing the uh, the it's like seller. it's a direct buyer, unrepresented, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. The you're writing the offer from the listing side for the no. buyer to sign. No. So even if they're unrepresented, you still create a contact for them yes. and create the opportunity to just 
have their own file. By, by virtue of having your own uh, file for them, it doesn't create agency. You're not now suddenly representing them, but it is a separate file for that person. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and it's just, it's really important down the road. Sorry, not to rabbit hole, but because down the road, if maybe you are able to convert that person, that's why they have their own contact, they have their own transaction files, et cetera, all separate for you to refer back to. Right. But are they staying in the same room? No. No. Rooms, rooms and opportunities um, you would create per client. So, so if be you're doing a deal direct, you would have one opportunity for the seller and one opportunity separately for the buyer. Correct. Okay. Yep, which would then also lead to two separate rooms because the rooms are attached to the opportunity. Uh, when we get to the compliance piece, you'll see that there's different compliance folders in each one of the opportunity types. Cool. All right, so we're going to go move on from this screen here. Uh, the top right, we're going to have three buttons. We're going to have actions, which allows us to copy, make a duplication of this folder or envelope that we just created. If we just decided, well, you know what, we're not going to use this, we can hit delete. Otherwise, you know what, maybe we had to come back to this later. We can hit save and close and come back to this envelope and work on it. But for now, let's go ahead and hit next. When I hit next, it's gonna bring me to the screen now where I get to make those edits, uh, add boxes to it, signatures, crossouts, et cetera. And so now because we use the pre-tagged roles, the very first thing I wanna point out is when I come to the bottom of this document here, my signatures are already there for me. They're color-coded because they're assigned to the people that need to sign there. And I don't have to worry about doing much of anything with those. What I do notice is if I come up to the top left-hand corner, I click on where it says Christine Moore here, I'm gonna see anything that's yellow is Christine, blue is Peter, and purple is Fred. So again, a quick visual here. Now I know based on the color, who's who, and what needs to be signed by that particular person. I also wanna point out that they are solid, right? So this is a solid, yellow uh, box, which means that it is in fact required for the seller to sign it. So if I see in the top right hand corner, when I click on this, we get a bar that pops up. We're gonna say here recipient is Christine and it's a required field. If I uncheck this, it now becomes an outline. So now it's an optional signature, right? But I still want them to sign that. So I'm gonna leave it remaining as such but maybe I wanna switch this from Christine to Peter. I can just reassign it here on the right-hand side versus deleting and replacing it. Then we have a date signed. So just like dot loop, there was, or I'm sorry, unlike dot loop, dot loop had a, a date signature stamp with the signature itself. DocuSign does not. So we're gonna to need to make sure we add a date signed uh, piece here. So on the left hand side, you'll see date signed for every time we're adding a signature when it's required here. What I will note though is the date signed is twice as long as this box. So I'm going to want to move it over. That way it stays on the line. Why? Because it has the date and then it also has the time. Now, the time when people sign it, uh, I've gotten questions on, well, it's got a different. Uh, uh, time zone, whether it's Eastern or Pacific, and that really has to do with your client and accepting uh, whether or not they choose to, for the program to figure out where they're located. If they say yes, they'll say, okay, they're in Eastern time zone, and we'll put the Eastern time. Otherwise, it defaults, I think, to Pacific time. So now on the left-hand side, I'm just going to go through these fields here. So we have signature, nice and simple. Uh, dot loop, we had to worry about the width of the signature. DocuSign, we worry about the height. So we adjust the height of the text because the however long the signature and the name is, is however long that will be. Initials, bring those over. Same thing, we're adjusting the height of those and can move it around accordingly. Date signed, we just talked about. And now we have below that name, so I can bring in a full name. I can switch it from full name to first name or last name. 
I can bring in their email address. And if I had anything to do with company and title, I can bring those in as well. I'm gonna to touch on the other ones here in a second because I'm gonna move on to my residential property form here. Now, when we first looked at this, we saw that we were filling in this information inside of the room, but now because we use pre-tagged roles, all of these boxes are filled in for me. Now, could you imagine manually adding every single one of these in here? How long do you think that would take you to do? Right, if you used something other than pre-tagged roles, that's what you would be doing. I've done it. It took me about two hours to do it because I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, so use the pre-tagged roles as often as you can so that it brings in those fields for you so you don't have to manually do it. And so what we see here is I have radios or I can have check boxes. So I'm just gonna show you on the left-hand side, check boxes are square. Hit the plus, I can add new ones here. And then I have the radios. So the difference between the two check boxes, if I double click, I can select all of them with a radio. As I double click, I can only select one of them. So we have a and and then an or option, right? So in this case, I only want them to select one, but maybe if you have a bunch of things for them to check off, like personal property, uh, they would have check boxes so they can select more than one. Now, obviously I don't want those there, so I can either hit my delete key on my keyboard or on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a delete button. I can go ahead and delete that. Now a little bit pro tip on this one. Uh, obviously in here, this, these are all assigned to Christine, but maybe Christine and Peter both wanna be able to interact with these fields or and see them. So I'm gonna highlight them. I'm gonna get my pop-up here on the right-hand side and we're gonna see collaboration. Then there's a box here that says recipients can collaborate. So when I check that off and I send it out, everyone that I'm sending it to can now see and interact with these boxes. Where if I had not done that, only Christine was going to be able to see and interact with these. So now with these text boxes here. Sorry to interrupt. There is someone by the name of Faye on the call who has their, who's not muted. Yep, I already, I already took care of it. Thank you. So uh, these text boxes here, when I click on it, again, we'll see that it is hollow or outline. Um, I can go ahead and click on this box here and it becomes required. I can also set it to read only. So maybe I fill in this text. That's something I've added and I only want them to see it. I would hit that read only option. When I want to add the text so I have the box there, I can start typing. I can double click into it and then continue to type. Or I can click it once and come to the right hand side and add the text there as well. So we have different options to be able to do that. And we have uh, the check boxes we talked about, the radios, the drop downs you probably won't necessarily use, but you can if you wanted to give multiple choices. You just have your options here on the right hand side. Now we also asked about how to do some markups. So over here on the left hand side, we're going to see the pen markup tool. Hey, I can line, and I can go ahead and click and draw the line through this and then add my initials as needed. Yes. Is there a way to once you do this once, let's say with this document, save this as a template so you're not recreating this every time you send this to a client? Uh, out of curiosity, uh, what in here that I'm doing would you want to have as a template? Basically what fields are required and what fields are not. It's already set for you. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. That must that's why we're using pre-tagged roles. I must have. I apologize. I, I missed that. Thank yeah, you. That's why I wanted to ask. So. This, I'm showing you all of the ways to be able to do this for when you, when you bring in a flat PDF and you have to add these boxes in yourself. So for like me in Connecticut, when I have this document on the buying side, there's quite a few fields sure. that I have to add the buyer's initials to. And maybe there's boxes that I need to add in for them to fill out. All of this stuff that's here already, we use pre-tagged roles, it populated, it's already says, this is assigned to Christine, 
uh, she needs to fill it out. It's an, it's an optional field, so I'm not going to change it. Right, so well, I guess perfect. my question there is, if you go back to that the sidebar, required was not checked off. It's not a required field. Ah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. So there's um, nothing in this document that is required. True. Anything yeah, very that true. Yeah. is required okay. would have would be solid. Sure. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. So as I move down, we're going to see that on. Wait, Fred, all the before fields. you continue, can yes. you hear me? Yep. Um, I've done um, sellers' disclosures where I've done check boxes and had them fill in the check boxes, and I can't make the check boxes required. Is that how it's supposed to work, or am I doing something wrong? Um, I don't know of a way to make them required. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't find a way to do it. So Yeah, I don't I don't know of a way to make check boxes themselves required. Um I'll have to get back to you on that one, but I've I've never been able to find a way to, okay. to necessarily do that. Thank you. Yep. Um so I have some formatting issues on, on this document that I need to update, but I'm gonna you'll see that the names came in already. We have the signatures. Um but what I was gonna get to before is I have to add on the buying side, these initials manually every single time. Now, I personally like shortcuts. So where in dot loop, I can select these and I can go control shift C and copy it inside of DocuSign, I can just do control C, right? Or I right click and I copy. So now I can come over here and paste it, move it to where it needs to go. And I can go along on every one of my documents and paste it to where it needs to go. Now let's say I copied these initials and I wanna paste it here, let's say for some reason, and I right click and hit paste. I pasted it, but it pasted relative to where I copied it from on the X, Y axis of this document. So what I need to do, right, if I want it up here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste to location just an easier way for me to take these and put them where they need to go without having to go, all right, I need a Christine's initial and let me resize it. And then I'm gonna come over here and change it to Peter, add Peter's initial and then select them, move them to where they need to go. I just like to be able to copy and paste, move myself right along. Yeah, I'm going over everything that you can do in here. Doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to do for this particular document. I'm just letting you know that these are things that you can do depending on the file that you're working on. Fred, quick question for you. Sure. You had just started with a pen markup tool to cross out. Yes. Um, I don't know whether you finished. However, my initial question, if you have the ability to cross out a already pre-provided um, pre text, mm -hmm. but there is no box next to it and you need to add a change, how do you do that? Sure. So let's say this is the document that you were sent, right? Is that fair? Sure. All right. So I'm going to come to my pen icon. I'm going to click the cross out tool, draw my cross out. I'm going to come up. I'm going to add a text box, resize it to where I need it to be. Type in the text I need here. Okay, so so this is great because in dot loop, if you crossed it out, you had to save it as a flat copy, re-upload it, and then put in the text box on the flat copy. Yeah, so you so don't have to do it here. Yeah, everything's gonna be right here, right? Because then you have to add the initials right. for the person. Okay, that's, that's great, thank you yep. so much. Yep, absolutely. And so now I'm seeing a lot of dot loop stuff in the chat. I 100% get it. I use dot loop for quite some time. And one thing I will say is I now prefer using DocuSign. I'm not saying that because I'm teaching it. It's the truth. I'd rather come into DocuSign and, and work my way through than dot loop. For me, because I'm using it more than I use DocuSign or dot loop now, it's easier, right? If you're using dot loop and you come to this for the first time, it's going to be like, holy cow, what do I do? But if you were using DocuSign every day and you went to dot loop, it'd be holy cow, what do I do? So just take, take that into consideration that one, uh, dot loop, they're taking your information and using it, where DocuSign may take a little bit of time for you to learn, but it's gonna be beneficial to you and your clients in the long run. 
So all right, so now we have all of our signatures, all of our fields in here, everything's ready to go. Now there's one more step for us to take and that's to hit that send button, right? We look, everything looks good, we hit send. It fires off to our clients uh, for them to sign. If I wanted to see before I sent it, what it looks like, right next to it says recipient preview in the top right. And I can come here and I can see exactly what Christine's gonna see when I send it to her, when she's looking on a desktop, when she's looking on her tablet or her smartphone. And so I can interact with this, so I can hit start and I can start signing these boxes. And when I do that, all it's gonna say is signature. I don't know if it's tough to see on the screen, but it just says signature and the initial says IN. And right, so anything I do here will not actually affect what I'm doing uh, in the long run. It's just for me to visually see, all right, this is what they're gonna see, perfect. So when Christine calls me and says, Fred, I have no idea what I'm doing. Great, hit that start button. Wonderful, hit next, awesome. Click on that initial thing and keep clicking, right? It'll tell you, go all the way through for you to be able to fill those out. And you can do that for Christine, Peter, and, and Fred there. So I'm gonna click the X in the top right-hand corner. And now I'm not gonna send this to my wife because she will go crazy thinking we're selling the house. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit back. And I'm gonna come back into my envelope here and I'm just gonna hit save and close. All right, so let's assume that I did hit that send button and it did fire off to our clients and they filled it out and they signed it. And we come back into our envelope and we're gonna see this envelope. So we're in the envelopes tab here, this envelope, and it's gonna have different colors. So gray, obviously is draft. You have a blue one here if it says waiting for others or waiting for you to sign. If it says waiting for you to sign, click on it. It'll allow you to sign right here on the screen. Otherwise it will be red because you sent it off, you right clicked and you voided it. Or it'll be green and say complete. Once you see green, you'll know you can come back to documents and you're gonna see these three forms because these never go away. These are always fillable and, and never have a signature. But in addition to, you'll see three more documents. It'll say GAR exclusive right to sell, lease, contract, dash signed right next to it and the form icon will be green and say signed so we'll have two we'll have the editable copy and then we'll have a flat copy that has gone through my envelope and we'll have that for each one of these forms that we put in and then in addition to we'll have one more that says certificate that's gone through the envelope and that'll have a red icon that says pdf so what i just get in the habit of doing is clicking on that and archiving it because uh, i don't want to see it in my room so that's why we'll see the forms, we'll see the signed, and then the PDF. So now we have our documents inside of our room. We created the opportunity and then created the room so they're connected. And now we have to do compliance. So I'm gonna jump into my opportunity, but before I do so, I'm just gonna show you what an active room looks like so you can see what those icons are. Will we get notifications when documents are signed? Yes, you'll get an email that the client opened the envelope and looked at it, and then you'll get an email once all parties have signed. Can I save in the middle of working on the envelope? Yes, uh, it saves automatically. So if you were to back out of the envelope and come back to whatever screen, uh, you can always go back and continue working. And everything you did will remain in place. And so just to give you an example, this is an active document or active file. We're gonna see my form, my PDF. So this is the certification that it's been gone through the DocuSign. And then it says signed because I have a signature. So those are the three different file types that you'll see. You can create different folders and organize them and hide them. Um, I just hand it off to my transaction coordinator and let them run with it. All right, so we got our documents, we're good to go. Now let's go to compliance. So click on the tab at the top. Let's head back into our opportunity. Uh, no, you cannot revert to a prior safe. Uh, so it's whatever you do, you'll just have to go back in and make those changes. So now we're in, back inside of our opportunity and we need to do compliance for the listing. My market center, we have a 40 hour window from when we have a fully executed listing agreements or purchase and sale to do our compliance. So now I'd come in, I see it's asking me for my exclusive right to sell. I come over to the right, it says add a file. I click on that 
in there it's manuals because I have ink signatures or it's on my computer or I click on DocuSign here and I'm gonna see all of the files that are inside of my room to choose from. So I'll go ahead and select the appropriate one and assign. When I do that, now I have blue text here where I can click on or green teal. Uh, and when I open it up, we're gonna see that documents. And in this case, it's the wrong one. Somebody close out of it and I can get the three little dots and remove it. So now that's one way to do it, right? Add a file, we add them individually, we move down the line. I wanna be more efficient. So I'm gonna click in the middle of the screen here where it says add uh, multiple or attach multiple files. And I'm gonna select DocuSign. And then I'm gonna come down exclusive right to sell, lead, personal property, whatever it may be. And I'm just gonna select the ones, hit attach, and then they become assigned right there. So now those are all set. And now what I need to do from here is hit submit to market center and those get fired off to my compliance team to either notify me that I am compliant or reject it and I'll get an email saying that it's been rejected and I can come in and check my comments. Maybe they wrote me a, a note and I can see what they said right. to me and what I need to do. Fred, does it automatically take the signed copy? It does not automatically. That's why we're manually adding the files. Um, so as far as my market center is concerned, these documents that are listed here are what required for us to be compliant. There's nothing else in here that they're asking for us to add. So if I have an additional addendum, personally, I'm going to leave it in my room. I have my listing and I have my under contract. So I would do that accordingly. And once I'm under contract, I would do this. But then I would also do my offers and then my commissions. Fred, can I just make a quick note um, yes. about the add a comment function there? Uh, just a quick reminder that um, when you're leaving a note for compliance, um, don't treat it, even though you can do the add sign where it kind of tags the person to alert them, try not to use that as an interactive time sensitive back and forth. Use it only for when you're leaving notes about the document. So when compliance, or your MCA go in, they see that note sitting there, right? So if it is something that's urgent or time sensitive, you know, still pick up the phone or, or, or call or email. So I just wanted to make the difference between those two. Absolutely, yeah, because this is gonna be more of when they come in, they'll see it versus, um, oh no, Chris needs something right now kind of deal. Yeah, um, exactly. Even though like you know, that push notification you'll find in Kelly, right? That's really terrific, but if, Hundreds of agents are always like just leaving notes sporadically. It will very quickly get lost. So we're treating it only as here's a note about this document. So when you're in there, you see it, not, you know, alert, alert. All right. So Stig has a question here. Uh, can you duplicate or import a document from a previous room that didn't close? Uh, why would you pull in a document from a room that isn't associated with the file you're working on? This may be a question in regard to our current transition at that office, where if somebody has begun a, a deal in one place prior to importing, is that correct, Stieg? Stieg, you can unmute yourself if you're there. I'm just gonna keep, so okay. sometimes agents will also think that a deal fell apart. So let me uh, archive my opportunity and start a new opportunity, which then creates a new room we don't wanna do that. Think of the opportunity as the person giving you the opportunity to buy or sell that property, right? Unless they decide, you know what? I'm no longer buying with you. So Chris, I'm sorry, you can't be my agent anymore. Fred's better, I'm gonna work with him. Then that's an opportunity that you lost and you can close it down. Otherwise you keep the same opportunity in the same room and those files will all be in the same place for you. On the same note, if I lose this transaction, right? The buyer backs out and decides, hey, I'm no longer interested in this property. I'm gonna come here where it says under contracts and it says add a version. And I'm gonna add a second version here for my new buyer. And I'm gonna do my compliance over again and submit it to compliance. 
that's one of my favorite things because that is so much easier than what agents used to have to do in dot loop which is you're creating all kinds of new folders and documents or just a whole new loop here you're basically setting aside all the previous documents and then starting starting from a clean slate for that buyer you know under contract portion of the transaction i love that uh, Caroline, I think you're referring back to where to get the files. And that was, I think, uh, Chris had mentioned he was going to circle back with you on that because we started the class with where to get those inside of the room, um, adding them to uh, to the room for you to get signatures. Okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, I'm not finding where I access dot loop on command. I'm joined and signed up. So dot loop, what you're going to do is head to the marketplace, add it to your command and then sync it from there. Make sure you use the correct email address and don't accidentally create. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to accidentally create a new dot loop account. So just be very particular when you do that process. Yeah. So cool. So I mean, again, I, I wanted to focus on uh, DocuSign today, which uh, I vomited all over you guys with a ton of information on DocuSign. Uh, one thing that I do want to leave you with, I'm going to put in the chat, is something that I created for my market center. Uh, it gives them a walkthrough. Uh, you might have already had something like this as well, Chris. Um, yep, we, we have a, a full hour and a half walkthrough of it. Perfect. Uh, so it's a pictures, PDF, step-by-step, -step, everything we went through today. Um, that'll help that helps our agents could help you and we'll be able to go ahead uh get you started in that but one thing to keep in mind unless you're going to be doing this all of the time it's going to take a little bit of time for you to catch up to it right so there are steps you have to take in order to get from point a to point b uh some nuances every once in a while you're like i forgot to do that step which is why i can't go to the next step uh, so be patient with it spend some time in it right L Use yourself as a client first. Hey, what is it going to look like when I send it off so that you're familiar with it before sending it off to a client and getting frustrated? Does anyone else have any other questions about what we went over today before we go ahead and end the class? I have a quick question. Sure. Hey, um, maybe I missed it, but um, in that loop, there is a way we can kind of split it, the documents, and then rotate it and then there's a way to kind of edit it. Do That's a great question. Yeah. There totally is that, and I didn't want to go too deep into some of the stuff, but you can absolutely do that. So let's say I have, let's see if I have a multiple document file here. Yeah, so my MLS, oh, that's one form, let's see. Well, I'm just looking for multiple pages. Our executed contract should have multiple pages. So if I come here, and I click on this document actions button. There it gives me some options and I can hit split. And then I take all of these files here and I can say, okay, I want this to be the lead form. And it's pages one and then add a document and it's prop conditions and that's two to five. Right, so now it would split this between one and then two and five as two separate documents. Oh, also that means I can combine it, right? Yep, so I've split it here, and then to combine it, we would just select the documents we wanna combine, and there's that option here to combine. Oh, awesome, thank you. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I did put in a step-by-step -step PDF manual link inside of the chat, is the bit.ly link there for you. Uh, yeah. So go ahead and you can follow that as well. And I will repost that in our Facebook group as well, guys, with your permission, Fred. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Go for it. So. Cool. Fred, All thank right. you so, so much, by the way. I really, really appreciate this. It was very informative. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys have any questions, never hesitate to reach out to Chris. Now, uh, <laughs> you guys have my information. It's there. Uh, I'll put it in the chat as well. So if you guys ever need anything, I'm here to help. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a spectacular week and enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Happy Wednesday. Bye. Bye, everyone.